Hello, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great evening tonight. Happy Tuesday. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight. So we are working on the Travel Art Folio by Patty Young of Mod Kid. This is our new project. It's the first project in our designer series where I just get to play with, uh, with some other designers' work and learn from them and, and make fun projects. And I'm excited uh, for you guys to be sewing with me tonight. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft. And uh, tonight, again, we are sewing the Travel Art Folio uh, from uh, Petty Young of Mod Kid. There is a link to the PDF version of this pattern if you want to download that and get going. Uh, this is the second night we're working on it. Yesterday we cut out all the pieces and tonight we get to start assembling it. Uh, so done with the scary part. The cutting for me is always the most nerve wracking part of a project and now, now I'm excited. Now it's going to be chill and fun and easy. So all right, let's get going. Thanks again for coming in tonight guys. If you're, if you're working on this project or really any other project, I'd love if you shared. Uh, you can uh, go to the Penguin and Fish Crafters page on the group on Facebook and click join and share your photos there. Uh, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going, guys. All righty. We're going to cruise through some of these steps today, I think. So again, here is the travel art folio. This is the printed version. Uh, right now, the PDF version, uh, the PDF downloadable version is available if you wanted to uh, work on this. When you start cutting sometimes, I get a curve when I cut at the fold with a new blade. Oh, Sherry, I'm not sure. Are you moving the ruler as you, as you cut? Or curve at the fold? Oh, uh, uh, Otherwise, the fold might not be perfectly straight, so it maybe appears curved. I'm not sure. Uh, if anyone else has an idea, uh, spit it out. But all right, so uh, we left off with all the cutting. I have some of the pieces ready that we'll be working on today. So step one, fuse the fusible fleece to the wrong side of one of the main panels. So that's the handles. I'm going to put that away. Here are my main panels. Uh, this will become the outer main panel. Fuse the medium weight interfacing to the wrong side of the remaining panel. That will become the inner main panel. All right, we can do that. Put the fold towards you. That's a good idea. All right, here are the cute fabrics again. So I didn't press these very good last time before I started. Yeah, look at all that. So I will press them first. We'll go one at a time. I will press this one first and then we'll put the fusible fleece. So that is the front one. And then the inner one will get fused to the interfacing. So I'm gonna set that aside. So now I just have my fusible fleece and my fabric here. So let's start out by pressing. Oh man, did any of you uh, jump in on the uh, Amazon Prime Day <laughs> today. Uh, so it started last night late and uh, I was up super late and uh, then got on Amazon Prime because it started it started late at night at like 1 a.m. in the morning sort of thing. And uh, of course I ended up buying something. Uh, but I, I bought some headphones because my, my old fed headphones just broke last week like irreparably broken last week. And uh, so they had a deal on headphones and I ordered them last night at like, actually I probably ordered them this morning at about 1 a.m. and they arrived today already. <laughs> so same day for, for nothing. That's pretty crazy, don't you think? Pretty crazy. All right, so here's my fleece. Think how I'm gonna do this. So this isn't, you know what? I don't have uh, my my uh, ironing board isn't big enough to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin. I'm gonna pin this to. Actually, it probably will stick pretty well. 
Yeah, so uh, this rough surface, this is the fleece. So the fleecy side, I'm gonna lay down and the rough surface, which is the glue side, I'm gonna put up. And I was gonna pin this, but that glue side is just grabbing onto this. So what I'm gonna do is just lay it out flat. So I'm laying it out flat. Bonnie, I do not have my extension table yet. However, it has shipped and I do um, oh, have a shipping estimate for it. I think Friday is when it should be here. But man, it's about time, right? I'm excited to get using it. And I, I wanted it for the last project. I want it for this project, but still, still nothing. But I have heard from them. It is on its way. Oh, uh, not always Patricia, but last night, uh, last night my husband and I went for a, like a really long walk after, after my uh, Facebook live. And then I was all jazzed and, and awake. So <laughs> that kind of, uh, kind of made it extra late. So just to get this going, I'm going to press the, just where I can. I mean, I'm going to have to get the edges a little bit more. But I want to I want to get it all down first before I get too far because I I have a limited ironing board here. A dragon face on the fabric. Oh, it does kind of look like a dragon face, doesn't it? I love uh, my favorite thing about this. Why I chose it was because of these little uh, grasshoppers on it. It's so cute. All right, let's put that down there. I'm gonna shimmy this over. So I don't really have instructions for the fusible fleece. I'm just working at my uh, highest setting, like my cotton setting. And uh, typically I think it's with fusible stuff, you want to make sure it's on the area for I think five to 10 seconds. I don't know. You can do a test, but like I said, right now, I just want it all down and then I'll go back and, and fuse it a little bit better. But yeah, just cause I'm working on my limited Thing. Man, you know what? Fusing it to the fleece already makes this feel like a finished something. It's kind of funny. All right, so now I'm going to go up and fuse the, the rest. Again, I just because I have this small ironing board, I'm kind of going bit by bit. And we'll do the same with, with that second piece. So the second piece is that interfacing. But yeah, Amazon Prime Day, could not believe how uh, fast that came. I also got a gift for my husband for his birthday coming up. And uh, <laughs> the face wash that I used that was on sale uh, during the Amazon Prime Day too. So <laughs> I scored a few things. All right, so one thing to make sure of, and I'm just thinking of this now, uh, if you do have some of your fusible uh, little glue dots exposed here. Be careful. Uh, you don't want to get it on your iron so much. So uh, just be careful that you're not, you know, laying the iron on it. All right, we'll keep going. Oh, <laughs> it will be perfect. I think it's sticking. I probably should have tested that one end before fusing this whole thing. So uh, if the if you don't get the edges perfect, that's okay too, because there is a half inch seam allowance that we'll be sewing with here. So it's not gonna, if it's not fused all the way to the end, you're not gonna die. It really feels like a finished thing all of a sudden though with with it fused to something, it feels really substantial. I can see maybe using this a lot more in the future, this this fusible fleece. It's it just gives uh, some heft heft to the fabric and I don't know, what's good use for it besides vague type stuff? I'm gonna have to start thinking about that. Um, I'm ironing on a towel because this ironing board uh, has metal underneath it and it keeps, it scorches my fabric. Uh, it's a relatively new ironing board because my old one got 
just super gross. And I started noticing that it was scorching my fabric. You could see the like uh, the pattern of the metal coming up on my fabric. So I'm like, uh-uh, that's not right. So in lieu of getting a new one or fixing it yet, I just threw a towel on it for now. All right, let's see how we did here. Oh yeah, that's that's fused. I could probably tear it off if I wanted to, but nope, we are good. So that's our first piece. Nice and flat. Oh, it looks perfect. Oh, so cute. Look at those little grasshoppers on there. So fun. And it does kind of look like a dragon head, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so that guy's done. Next, oh yeah, the towel is perfect. The little kitties, I know, right? <laughs> Can't go wrong with the kitty towel. All right, so next up, so this is gonna represent the outside. And now this will be the inside. This is just that fusible, uh, just that medium weight fusible interfacing, but it's the same on the, on the front or the, on the one side, it's just kind of smooth. And on this side, it's very clear, it's rough, very clear that it's the, the glue side. So, all right, again, I'm gonna have to press this first, I think, and then I will lay this on the ironing, or I'll lay this out and, you know, kind of match it up and see if I need to pin it or not. And uh, I'm gonna set this aside down here. And then we'll fuse that. And you know what, that means Step number one will be done. Next up after step one is the handles. So that's, a, that's some more pressing. I think we'll definitely get through the handles tonight. I'm hoping we can actually get the, uh, the flap, what is it? The outer flap. Outer flap is step three. I'm, I'm hoping we can get that done tonight too. But if we get the handles done, up through the handles, that's pretty good progress, I think. Even if I did press this before I cut it, which would have been smart, <laughs> but I, I would have uh, pressed it now again anyway, just to get it that last, last prep stage before going or sewing it or pressing it, pressing the, fusing it to the fusible. All right, that's pressed. Let's lay out this fusible. So I'm going to put the rough side up, the rough, the glue side up. And again, I'm gonna take this and kind of match it to it. And again, it doesn't seem like I have to pin it because because it's, it just kind of is attaching itself, kind of like a flannel board. It's, it's just attaching itself to the, to the interfacing. So I don't, to the fusible part, I don't, I don't think we'll have a problem. So, all right, let's get this up back on the ironing board. Again, I'm just gonna kind of run down the middle first just to get it all attached and then I'll work on the edges. We may have to trim this again later once we get to the front and back, uh, sewing the front and back, because I, I cut the, this, the fabric piece uh, like a quarter inch larger than I needed to, so I just need to trim it, trim it up again. No biggie, just gotta remember to do it. Ooh, big storm tonight. Oh, well be safe, Patricia. Thanks for joining. All right, last little bit. And then I'll flip it around. I'll rotate it and do all the edges. So you can still do all this stuff with a tiny ironing board. All right, here we are. Went off the edge a little bit here, but again, that's okay. With that uh, half inch seam allowance. Again, this is making it feel pretty substantial, but that fleece is really cool. I've never used fusible fleece before. Uh, let me know if any of you guys have used fusible fleece and, and what do you typically use it for? It's kind of 
fun. I'm just, I'm trying to think of ways to use it. You could use it for like, instead of batting for like hot pad holders and stuff, I'm, I'm guessing maybe. It's steaming my iron. Oh, I'm also using a dry iron right now, which means I'm not, I don't have any water in it. I'm not using steam at all. I don't think you typically want to use steam when you're uh, fusing, fusing items to each other. Almost through. I think two more little segments and we should be good. Got a little bit of the fusible exposed down here again, but again, we'll have that half inch seam allowance, so it won't, it won't matter much. You use it a lot. Oh, interesting. So, what do you use it for, Michelle? I, I actually have a small little bag of it uh, that's just been hanging out for a long time and you know I, I got it as a sample or something and and uh, haven't used it yet. I bet you a bolt of it would be pretty fat all, all that fleece. Thick fleece. But it does really feel nice on on the fabric for sure. Really makes it feel hefty. All right, we are fused. Let me get that little corner there, little corner here. All right, so that is step one, guys. We have our fusible fleece. So again, this is that fleece, it's fuzzy, but look how thick it is. It is pretty substantial here. And then, so this represents the outer main panel. So this is what will get folded up into, you know, the thirds and then, you know, with, with the handles, the handles here. So that's the outside. And then this is the inside. This is what will get covered up by all the, all the various pockets and holders and all that. Okay, so there we go. Oh, so people use it, so like hot pads and things like pouches, bags. Oh yeah, just little pouches. Just fusing it to fleece beforehand would give it, would give it uh, some uh, heftiness, some substance to, to a little, a little purse or something. That, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, look, it's gonna be cute. It feels like something already. So, all right, there we are. Moving on to step two. Step two is the handles. Uh, here we are. So we are going to press this whole thing because I don't think we've pressed it either. Don't need my little label anymore. And uh, we are going to press it. First we're going to press it the long way in like this. Then we're going to unfold it and then press this side in, then this side in. Maybe we'll try and do that at the same time. I don't know. We'll see. And then again. So there, it'll end up being four layers of fabric. Oh, look how pretty it's going to be. It's gonna, I'm going to have like little diamonds for handles. Oh, I love that. And then we uh, top stitch both sides down. And that's that. So let's press. Start by pressing again. She uses fusible interfacing for the back of her wool background. Oh, well, that's interesting. So she does embroidery on, on wool or something, and she uses uh, the fusible interfacing to stabilize the embroidery. That's interesting. Might have to try something like that. So I'm giving it a quick press. And we will start out by pressing it in half. So this reminds me of doing like a binding or something where you're, where you're going on the really long, which I think is probably easier for me to match the edges if they're towards me. So there we go. We're getting a good crease on the inside first. 
Oh, you've used fusible fleece for handles of bags too. Oh, that's interesting. That would give it a nice, strong handle feel. All right. We want a nice, good crease here. And then we'll scooch it down. This piece isn't all that long, so it's not like a binding where we're pressing all day. Just kind of lining up the next segment. I'm kind of doing it in little segments, so I'm not uh, pulling the fabric too much. I don't want to. I don't want to stretch it. Oh yeah, stiffer handles with the fusible fleece. All right, two more little segments, I think, and we'll be done. Then we open this up and uh, press some more. Press it to to this uh, crease that we're making. We're kind of making bias tape here, double, double bias tape. All right. So doing that a few more times and then we will be ready to sew, top stitch the handles. Top stitching just, um, gets our folds basically held down. All right, you know what? Let's, let's attempt to do this at the same time. So I'm gonna fold the bottom up. We'll just have to go little by little. I'm folding it up to the, fold, that fold line that we just made. And I'm gonna fold this one down to the fold line. Let's get real close to the edge just to get started. And I'm going to just kind of keep going down the edge. Try not to stay on the fabric too long, but get it going here. So these handles will be, I think, completely, perfectly substantial for, for this project. You know, it's, it's going to be four layers of fabric, so that's, that's quite a bit. Hmm, it's not really wanting to fold very much. I'm wondering if it's because I'm pressing on this towel. Oops, there we go. You know what, I think I'm gonna give it a little uh, spray of starch just uh, to get my creases going a little bit better. Oh, but I think I'll lose this crease. Ah, we'll give it a go. This inner part is just, just a guide. So I have a, we'll use, we'll use a really light, starch so I just have this flatter it smells really nice so I haven't used it for a while we'll spritz some of that on here just to kind of again I think this will help help get our crease going better I might have to remove the towel for this even I don't know we'll see Oh, I, I don't have any water in the iron right now, so uh, I guess, so I can't use steam because I don't have the water, but the the starch is kind of, kind of acting like steam. Uh, I think the kits are sold out, so, uh, or actually, she might have one more, but I think, I think they're sold out. Uh, the sale was going on because uh, they were, Patty was going to be out of town during that time, so... It was a it was a quick sale, but the uh, the PDF is available, and all of these other products are pretty readily available in uh, you know like a Joanne store or another other big big box stores, and you know your local quilt shop might have some of this fusible fleece and Velcro and and all this stuff too. Having a kind of a weird time with this iron. It's not. There we go. Maybe I just have to press harder. Yeah, it's super hot. It's on the highest setting. I don't know. Maybe this fabric just 
doesn't like being folded very much. I mean, we're gonna take care of it real quick here when we sew it down, but all right, I think it's working better. So the starch helped. I think I had more starch here. So I'm gonna scooch it down and we'll starch it again. So steam would have been really helpful. I am uh, in lieu of steam. I am basically making my own steam with, with this starch. So spraying it a little bit more and folding kind of the next section. Now that we get the first section down, that's helpful for holding everything in place. All right, I think there we go. Oh, there it starts, there's it sizzling a little bit. We'll get about to there. They almost line up <laughs> the patterns, meaning I almost cut this straight. Or it could be the the printing could be not perfectly square either. All right, moving down. I think I have enough starch yet. There we go. Looks good. Yeah, this is, I'm glad I'm doing both at the same time though, the folding, folding uh, them towards the center. Otherwise we'd have to do this whole process again to fold the other side. All right, let's do a little bit more starch just to the end. This smells so nice, this, this flatter. This is a uh, celebration is the flavor. It's kind of a little floral smelling like a sweet Sweet, kind of sugary floral almost. It's a much lighter starch than, than like best press. Mostly just smells good. In this case, it's just my steam replacement. Uh, where can you get it? So uh, it's available at uh, boutique quilt shops. For sure. And actually you can probably get it on Amazon too. It's used uh, to, you know, starch shirts that you iron and, and all that too to make it smell nice and be happy. There's a lot of flavors too. Uh, fig, I think is a flavor. Actually there's not a lot of flavors. There's like four flavors, but they're all really yummy. Fig is, is one that I like. I think it's called fig. I don't have it out here. I just have this one out right now. I had to try out the pink kind, which is the floral celebration. That was the only flavor I hadn't hadn't used yet. All right, we are to the end. I'll put a link to it in uh, in the show notes when I'm done here. So in the description of this video, I'll I'll throw in uh, a link to get some flatter, which is the starch that I'm using. Just giving it one more little double check press. All right, and one more press, and then we are done pressing these handles. So folding it in half one more time. Again, I'm gonna to fold towards me so I can see, see those edges matching up. A little bit easier. All right. And we're just gonna go down the row again. Uh, they have, a, yeah, I wasn't really a floral, I'm not really a floral person either. That's why I, this is the last one that I got. There's, there's one, oh man. Trying to think. There's one that has a funny name. I can't remember of it. That one's a little more fruity. Actually, this floral one's kind of fruity. I would actually maybe call it more fruity than floral. I'll have to, I'll have to get the other ones out again. Maybe I can describe them a little better. It's been a little while since I've used used any of the flatter. Happen to have it in my little workstation here. I, I mean, I didn't want these handles super starchy. I just needed to get them a little damp.
All right, I think one more little bit and we'll be good. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the names of, of the flatter again. Oh, well. Um, no, the, the flatter does not leave a, a, a white residue at all. It's actually pretty weak. It's not, you're not going to get a super duper starched shirt from or something, but it, it will get out the wrinkles and it will um, make the clothes smell really nice or the fabric. All right. There we are. So, uh, you know, let's give this one little bit, one last press. So next up is the top stitching of these. So top stitching can be more decorative than, oh, yuzu. Yeah, yuzu. That was one of the flavors. That's kind of more of a, that's kind of like more of a kind of richer, not fruity, but I don't know. I like that one, the yuzu. All right. Starch can go away. So next up, we are going to top stitch an eighth inch away from both long edges. So I'm going to do, I mean, really technically, we are doing it, we are, we're sewing on the edge here so that these flaps stay together. And then the other one is just a decorative one to make it look look the same on each side and to hold hold the whole thing flat. So I'm going to sew this side first and I have put, uh, since we're top stitching, meaning it's going to be visible, the, uh, the thread's going to be visible, I put a top stitching needle in and I put some of this really cute orange, uh, uh, not 50 weight, the 12 weight. This is the 12 weight Aurifil thread which is super thick here. I still have the gray in the bobbin. So that's 50 weight in the bobbin and I have the 12 weight in the, on the top. So I thought that might be kind of fun, uh, to go since we'll be doing a whole pile of top stitching. So visible stitches. So, uh, uh we'll give that a go. Some top stitching with pretty, pretty thread. So I did go through before coming on here and, uh, tested the tension and everything for it and put a new needle in. So hopefully we'll be good to go. Uh, with top stitching, if you're using a thick thread like this, you wanna use a top stitching needle. That's a needle that's got a, a bigger eye. So it's not rubbing on the thread, the thick thread as much. And it also, you also maybe wanna make your stitches a bit, a bit longer. So, all right, an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna kinda of just eyeball that. Uh, an eighth of an inch is kinda of right by my presser foot kind of. Yeah, we'll, we'll try an eighth of an inch. I think I could do it a little shy of an eighth of an inch and I think that might look a little nicer. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go like kind of in between a sixteenth and an eighth. I'm just going to kind of wing it. Let's get it started. All right, here we go. So while I sew, I'm just making sure that my fold is, is still looking okay. I don't have all these nice markings on, on my uh, machine for, the, for an eighth. I'm not quite sure where an eighth would be on here. I suppose I could measure it beforehand, but I think we're just, we're winging it. We're eyeballing it doing about an eighth. If you want it to be perfect, then you can, you know, you can, you can draw a line on or put some tape down. Or you can just wing it like me. <laughs> I think this is going to be the prettiest handles, this orange. So we can take a peek at what it's looking like now. So there we go. I started maybe a little thinner in, but uh, so we, you can see the cute little little orange top stitching and underneath is the gray, which is pretty hidden. Uh, that's a pretty neutral gray. So I'm gonna just go to the end and then I will rotate it and do the, the orange on this side as well. Just double checking again that we're lining up the edges. I'm a little off down here. 
but we'll be okay. Just check in every once in a while. These are gonna be super cute. I'm almost to the end. There we are. Get my little ender in there. Ooh, that broke my thread just then jumping, jumping to here. So I'll have to thread my needle again. All right, but there we go. That's our first top stitched side. And you know, technically it's held closed now, right? But to make it pretty and to hold the handle together a little bit more, we'll sew that other side. And I think I'm gonna actually rotate it this way. Typically you, you wanna start on the, the same end. So, uh, you know, I started here on this side, I should go back here and start, but uh, I don't know. I think it'd be hard to sew with it uh, sewing on like this edge. So I'm gonna just rotate it around and sew it here. But like I said, my thread just broke. I wonder if we're, we might be out of bobbin soon. Oh no, we still have a little bit yet. It's just that uh, unruly, fatter, fatter thread, I think. Not playing nice with me. All right, let's get her back in here. So I don't typically sew with different weights of thread on the top and bottom, but you know, this is all about experimenting and, and trying new things. So I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone. Uh oh, I don't think I have it both in there. Nope. Get a nice clean edge again on here. All right, let's see if we can get this through the eye. There we go, got it that time. All right, let's get started on my leader. Okay, ready to go again. So again, just double checking the orange is on the top. That's what I want. And we'll get this second end started. Let's trim those little fuzzles on the end. Boop. And again, just trying to get about uh, between a sixteenth and an eighth is what I'm kind of doing here. So this side is easier to, to sew because I'm not worried about matching edges or anything. I'm just, just going. So pretty, it's starting to look like a handle. This just flattens down this folded side too. Next up, we will trim these. You wanted to try the heavyweight thread, but unsure how to do it. Oh, you just stick to the 50 weight. So I I've, I have the 50 weight in the bobbin, and then I did this 12 weight, which is thicker. Uh, on the top and I did have to play with the tension a little bit. So I did have to do some testing. Uh, I can show you, I tested it on just like this piece from, from the sparkly hourglass quilt. Uh, so some of my earlier ones, this is at the normal setting. Uh, and look, it was, uh, it was a little loose. The threads were popping up underneath. So I had a, I had to switch it. And then finally I got kind of something close. And again, I had to make the the stitches a bit a bit longer as well so just experiment on on a little thing it's a tension that scares me well when when the uh like i'm not changing the tension of the bobbin at all i'm not i'm not doing anything there um if my tension is good on my machine right now i'll take a photo of um the tension actually i think i i have a photo here let me show you quick 
this is, um, I took this photo when I was using the metallic thread. Oh, here we go. See? So I took a photo of what I wanted it to go back to, and I put my, uh, my uh, thread length on there too. So that's just when I change the tension, I want to make sure I can get back to the old tension when I'm done. So I, I, I kind of take a photo of it. But then, you know, if, if you can see the thread, your front thread, top thread, popping through to the back, then it's probably too loose. And um, if it's pulling all the, the bobbin thread up to the top, then it's too tight. So you just have to turn the dial until, until you get something close. So you get something where it looks like the bobbin thread and the top thread meet in the, meet right in the middle of the fabric. All right, let's get another leader here. Okay, we have one long handle. So next up, we have to cut cut these handles. Ugh, but look how cute it is! It is just so neat. So let me trim this. I don't think I need to. I don't know, just for good measure, let's give it a give it a press. How about that? Pressing kind of sets the seam a little bit. So we'll just we'll just run run the whole thing under the iron quick. But this orange top stitching looks awesome. I'll show you show you it in a sec. Oops. Back there. Okay, so take a look at this top stitching. Isn't that cute with the orange? So see the difference in size. So this is the big 12 weight, and then the bobbin. Oop, little fuzzle. The bobbin is really thin underneath, but the tension looks good. Not, it's not uh, popping on either either side at all. So cute, love it. How do we live without smartphones? Oh, you take pics of it's like your memo book. Yeah, it's a it's a note taking device for for me. Sometimes, actually, when I'm making embroidery patterns, I will uh, take photos of my sketch and just bring my a photo of my sketch into the computer to start working on it. Um, just getting it, getting what's physical, digital. It just is really awesome. All right, so cut pieces in half to yield two handles exactly one inch by 16 inches long. So let's get the ruler out. This one, okay, this is a, this is a 16, this has an 18 inch ruler here. So let's just double check to make sure that we have the right amount. Let's just fold this in half. This should be, this should be at least 16. Oh, we are a little shy of 16 here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, You know what, I think I'm going to cut one side with the scissors and then just, well, I don't know, what's the best way to do this, do you think? So my handles won't be exactly 16 inches, it looks like. They'll be just shy. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I just have them folded in half. I'm going to just straight up cut this, this fold off. I know this is probably maybe a little weird way of doing it, but I'll know my, my pieces are lined up right in the middle. And then I'm gonna just trim the other side as well. So I'll know they'll be exactly, they'll be exactly the same length. It's just gonna be a hair shy of that 16 inches. But they're handles, I'm thinking, thinking that's not the end of the world. So again, just kind of getting this straight edge here. Yeah, we got kind of two little raw edges there. I'm gonna just trim that out. Yeah, I cut it in half already. I, I cut it in half by just cutting the, the fold off. Actually, I gotta scooch over my, my sewing machine's right there and that's not gonna give me enough space to, to trim. I'm just making it pretty by getting these edges good. There we go. So a slightly shy of the 16 inches, but I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking if the handles are slightly smaller, we're not gonna, we're still gonna be able to stick our hand through there. 
All right, here we go. So we're about at 15 and a half inches, but look, cute. Oh, we can start here. We can start envisioning it again. I always love kind of envisioning the process as we go. So here's our two fleece bits here. Uh, the handle, handles will be all cute with the top stitching on the outside. There we go, starting to, starting to see how it'll come together. There we can see a little bit better. Oh, these two look awesome together. I'm digging it. Uh, so let's see, should we, should we try and get the next part done? I think we can get the next part done in, in about 10 minutes. So we're creating the outer flap. So let me get the outer flap part. And we also need one of our Velcro pieces. Outer flap, here's all our outer flap parts. I'm gonna give those a quick press. Our little fabric piece is a quick press. Then I think I need to trim my Velcro so it's uh, perfectly sized. Okay, so we have our, ooh, glow in the dark embroidery floss. So I've never used that before, Sherry. Uh, so let me know how that, how that goes. They make all sorts of embroidery floss now, it's awesome. All right, creating the outer flap. Stitch the rough side of a five inch long piece of sew on Velcro to the right side. This is the right side, this is the wrong side of fabric. So to the right side of one of the outer flap pieces. So here we are, yep, outer flap, just checking my label again. Good, good thing to have those labels, uh, that's already helpful. So all right, I'm gonna double check that this is the five inches. So I'm just gonna squish it so it's nice and flat. I think I, yeah, it's, it's a bit longer, so. You know what, I'm gonna just, eh. I was gonna eyeball it without a ruler, but you know what, let's, let's get the ruler. I'm just gonna get this exactly five inches now, since I just cut it in half last night. There we are. That'll work. You'll need to make sure you have the 12 weight side up on both handles. Oh yeah, exactly. I'll have to make sure that I have that uh, the pretty top stitching up when I do the handles. Okay, so we take the rough side, or the, uh, is that how she called it? The rough side, yeah. So that would be the pokey side, I would guess. And sew it to the right side of one of the outer flat pieces, one inch from the bottom and one and a half inches from uh, each side. Okay, so that's the first step. You know what, I'm gonna just estimate this. So I'm gonna lay this uh, on my, my ruler here. And the one inch is right here, so you can even, you know what, I'm, I think I'm gonna put a dab of glue on the back here actually. I have uh, just some, some glue stick. I think this will just help me place this real well. Ooh, this is kinda, kinda dry, but I think, I think we'll be okay. I'm just doing it on the edge a little bit. I don't, I don't wanna get it on my needle. Hey Carol, never too late. All right, so I'm gonna just throw the ruler on here. Oops, we'll go one inch. So I'm lining up with the bottom. So one inch from the bottom and one and a half inches from either side. So here's the half inch, one and a half inch, and one and a half. And it's one inch up, that's looking pretty dang good. On the right side of the fabric. Oh, look how cute the pink is. All right. That's it. Oh, this side looks maybe a hair bigger than the other. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting perfectionist mode on. Nope, I think we're good. All right, so let's, uh, we'll top stitch this again. 
I'm not sure how this will work uh, with Velcro, the sewing, but we'll give it a go. I think I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to start in the, the lower, uh, the lower right hand corner typically is one of the last looked at places uh, for the four corners. So I always kind of start in the lower left hand corner when I sew. Uh, because I'm going to back tack there. So I'm going to sew a little back tack and then I'm going to sew all the way around here. Oh man, now I want like tons of colored Velcro. <laughs> what can I use colored Velcro for? See, that's why I want to do uh, do more projects like this because you just use items that you don't use all the time and that helps get the ideas flowing. All right, so I'm going to start kind of on the edge. So I don't know, this might be a little difficult to sew. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna try, I'm trying to get this tape part of it. Not right on all these rough little Velcro guys, but we'll just do our best. I think the glue uh, is, is a good idea though. That's gonna really help hold this down for me. All right, so I back tacked there where I just did, uh, I went forward a few stitches and then reversed a couple stitches. That kind of locks, it kind of makes a little knot for the for the thread so it won't come apart. Oh, this is sewing perfectly easy. I'm just following the edge of uh, all these little rough, rough dudes. All right, so I'm coming to the edge. I'm gonna just put the needle down and rotate it. I could probably go one more stitch, but I think, I think we'll stay there. All right, now I'm going all over all those little rough guys. That's kind of weird. Uh-oh. Needle got stuck a little there. I'm just taking my time. There we go. Rotate again. I'm gonna trim this, trim this guy off now that he's over here. Okay, we'll do this long edge. We might be on the verge of rubbing out a running out of bobbin thread as well. So I'll have to I'll throw in I'll put in some more bobbin thread before tomorrow. I think tomorrow we'll be sewing a whole lot more. All right, one more stitch. Rotate again. Listen to a chunk along. All right, and then back to where we began here, and I'll back tack it again there. All right, that's that. Oh, look. Now I'm done with the bobbin thread. Look, I just got a perfect, perfect amount of bobbin thread last. So crazy. <laughs> that's, that's good time in there. All right, so I always snip the front piece first. And then I, I pull on the back thread a little bit, which pulls that front front thread in a little bit, or it should. Then I uh, snip the back. I am not, oh wait, am I using the same thread on both fabrics? Oh yeah, like am I gonna use the this on the green too? For top stitching, when, when if we're just sewing pieces together, I won't, I'll just use my normal 50 weight I'll use use my normal sewing thread, but if we're gonna sh do something that's seen, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the orange. I do have some green, but uh, I like the orange. I think the orange will look pretty on the green. All right, so we are just about done with the flap part. I think the next, uh, I think we'll, we might not sew this together yet. We might pick this up tomorrow night, but let's get the the other piece fused. So this is the, uh, this is the outer part of the flap. Let's see. Oh, so this will kind of go like like this. It's the outer flap. So, you know, the Velcro would go on that side. Would be my guess. And, um, all right, next part. Let's just stick to the instructions, should we? All right, fuse, wait, to the bottom edge of each side. Okay, we did that. Fuse the fusible fleece. So here we have that one little piece of fusible fleece left to the wrong side of the other outer flat piece. And then, all right, then we then we start sewing after that. So I think tonight, let's fuse this together and then tomorrow we will start out 
by sewing these together. We get to draw a little curve down here. So we have a nice cute curved flaps and sew that together. So that will be tomorrow. And I won't use my top stitching thread anymore either. I will, um, since it won't be seen, this flap, I will use my normal thread. And then um, uh, we'll probably, we'll top stitch it after it's sewn together and I'll switch back to my top stitching thread. So I'm gonna be switching front, uh, forward and back a lot between between uh, my top stitching thread and my normal sewing thread. And I could probably do the whole thing with my normal sewing thread, but or with the top stitching thread. But I don't know, I think it might be better to sew with normal thread. All right, let's fuse this guy and uh, we'll call it an evening. This is our last uh, little interfacing piece, our last fusible fleece piece. And then that's it for, for all the fusible stuff. It was just the, the main outer pieces and this flap. Oh man, every step makes this cuter and cuter though. I mean, you think the fabric's cute, but then once it starts becoming stuff, it's just so exciting. Like, look at, look at how cute these uh, look against look against the, the green. I think that's cute. All right, and then here is, this will be the outside of the flap, I'm guessing. There, so these two will be together like this. So tomorrow we need to get a round edge to get a really cute round edge here. I think this might work just about right. A little round edge to draw, maybe even a bigger Bigger round edge. I don't know. I'll have to, we'll have to try different round pieces. So we'll we'll sew these two together. Actually, we'll we'll be going like this, right sides together. Then we'll be sewing sewing these together with the curve, and then turning it right side out, and then pressing it nice and flat, and then top stitching. So that's the plan number one tomorrow, and then we'll be starting on a sewing this whole bag together. I think we'll be sewing the flap on what we're doing right here and we'll be sewing the handles on. So that'll be a good, uh, that'll be a good job for tomorrow, but it is coming together already. You know what? This is, it's actually going uh, quite a bit faster than I thought. Uh, I thought this might take a whole long time to do it, but we are almost at the stage of assembling this guy. So I'm, I'm real happy with that. Easy peasy so far. Man, after you get through the cutting, then it's it's just fun. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening. Hello, hello. So here we are, our little mock-up. So here is what the flap will look like, and uh, let's let's get our little handle on there too. I always like pretending, pretending it's something. There, ow, oh, it is so cool. Okay, I am a million times in love with my fabric choices. <laughs> and you know, I don't even mind that, uh, that this fabric is sideways, because like I said, if I put this up on my shelf, then, uh, then the crickets will be, be right side up. But isn't that just so adorable. Okay, I'm like a million times in love with this. <laughs> so, all right, guys, uh, if you're working on this too, post them, post photos in your, in the Penguin and Fish crafters group. If you're not a member already, just click join and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get a notification when uh, people uh, hit join and then I have to go in and, and click. So if you don't get in right away, it's because I'm not online right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, show your photos in there. I will take a photo of this and plop it in there for tomorrow as well. Uh, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll, we'll, this will start looking like something tomorrow. I'm, I'm stoked. So this will go up on YouTube, this video at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it'll stay here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page as well. So have a great night, guys. I will catch you tomorrow. Good night.